Hey y'all, hey, Taylor Lauren here. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about my life as a beauty queen, as a wife, and as a mama. If that content interests y'all, then just keep on watching y'all today, finally and forever and at last. I am going to be telling y'all my birth story. My daughter is two and a half and I am just now getting around to doing this. I try to like get my doula and my husband involved, but the schedules just don't line up and like being on camera like isn't really like my husband's thing. <laughs> um, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna just go on and film it for y'all um, because my daughter is about to be three and we're in discussion about possibly having another child and just if we do have another kid, then I will be probably like way more into documenting when we had Blair, my first pregnancy, I was just like really in my solitude zone um, when it came to like focusing on labor and delivery and I didn't want any recording or anything like that. Um, but second time around, I'm gonna record everything and I'm gonna document everything. Um, but yeah, so if y'all wanna hear about our birth story, then just keep on watching. Okay, so let's rewind a bit. So I got pregnant and February of 21 we had Blair in November and y'all what's so funny the day before our wedding Corey and I got married April 3rd 2021 the day before our wedding was our pregnancy confirmation appointment and I was trying to hide it from so many people <laughs> from I was actually um my mother not my mother-in-law and I had our hair appointment the day before the wedding and I was late to the appointment because I was coming from the doctor's office and she was like oh like are you okay like why are you late and I was like lying my behind off <laughs> um trying to keep it from her that I was pregnant because one I was only seven weeks and two we announced our pregnancy to our family and then just everybody um on mother's day so that was our mom's mother's day gifts that year i will try to link the video of us telling um our family that we were pregnant in the description box below because it was the funniest sweetest thing ever um so yeah that was like the pregnancy side of everything and i loved being pregnant i have always wanted to be a mom outside of anything that i wanted to do career wise or ambition wise i know i I've always known that I've wanted to be a mom because I have a great relationship with my mom and I've just always wanted to be like her. And my prayer has always been if I can be half the mom to my daughter that my mom is to me, then I am blessed. Um, so we were very intentional with getting pregnant and having Blair. She was so desired. Um, and Corey and I were very intentional and moved very quickly with starting our family. Um, we have known each other since we were 13 years old. We started dating right at the top of 2019. Like I went to visit him for New Year's, came back with a boyfriend <laughs> um, in the new year. So we started dating in 2019, right at the top of the year in January. We um, moved in together in September of 2019. Corey proposed in May of 2020. We got pregnant in February of 21, got married April of 21, had a baby November of 21. So we got married and had a baby in the same year. Um, so once we knew and once he made it, his intentions clear that we we're going to spend the rest of our lives together, it was just like, why wait? And I love that about my husband. He's always been a man of vision and has always been intentional and he has been telling me since we were 13 years old that I was going to be his wife and be the mother of his children and <laughs> the man delivered. Um, so I loved being pregnant. And for me, before we had Blair out, y'all, I was a nanny for 10 years. So a lot of my work as a nanny was working with first time moms and help and being their support and just helping them navigate like breastfeeding and pumping and postpartum and, and all of these things. Um, so I had a lot of practice and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful for, um, that work and that career and that desire that was put in me to support moms and to help moms because it really came in handy, um, when it was my turn and there was 
a lot of information that I already knew. So I was just very excited to be pregnant and just happy. Um, and it was just such a, a joyous and beautiful time in my life. I was not scared about birth because I, I had spoken and worked with so many mothers who, you know, had vaginal births, who had C-sections, who had miscarriages, who had stillbirths, um, who had multiples, um, you know, just, just women who I, I was very grateful to be, ex to already have been exposed to women who have had, um, every kind of like birth on the spectrum. And I think that would be my main advice to pregnant women to new moms to if you want to be pregnant one day just talk to as many women as you can about pregnancy and birth um there are great uh birthing podcasts out there great pregnancy podcasts that you can listen to you just want to get exposed to a little bit of everything so that nothing surprises you if that makes sense um so I, yeah i was just very happy i didn't have any morning sickness at all um i wasn't concerned like about like swelling or getting fat or this is that and the other i did start to swell around like 36 weeks though towards the end of it and i was just happy to be growing life and 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 just to just to be about to become a mom it was just i was just very happy y'all i was just very happy when i was pregnant i'm still happy now but i was just very happy pregnant and i think your mindset is like a huge part of that and just the excitement of knowing that you're growing life and that your life is about to change but that change can still be good um so yeah so that's a little summary of like what pregnancy was like for me i still tried to be active and stretch and and i worked up until i went into labor i worked from home um full time and we did hire a doula that's another piece of advice that i would give you especially if you're a black woman, have a doula because it will provide you the education on what's going on with your body and pregnancy. They will provide education on what your, what your body is going to be doing while you're laboring and you're birthing. They will be an advocate for your husband or for your partner. They'll be your sounding board um, in the medical space and provide you with additional education for that. And then they will also be that postpartum support that you need. So... I will not be bringing any more children into this world without my husband and without my doula because my doula advocates for both of us. I'll also link um, our doula's IG down below. And when we got pregnant um, for the second time um, with, with Berkeley, with our angel baby, with our miscarriage baby, my doula, right after I told my husband, my doula was the first person that I text because I was trying to get on her schedule, y'all. Before I scheduled my OB appointment, before I scheduled my my pregnancy confirmation appointment, before I told my mom or anybody, like, I told my husband, and then I text my doula. I text her my positive pregnancy test. <laughs> um, so that's how serious I take it. Um, and I think once you have a doula, you won't go back. And I think it's just a disservice to yourself, especially as a black woman, for you to not have a doula and for you to not um, just honor yourself with that additional birthing education and advocacy yes you can do it on your own um women have done it on their own you know before but i think you will have a much better experience if you have a doula so we did have a doula we met with her like monthly you know for birthing classes and just birth education she helped us put together our birth plan um, I updated her with my OB appointments or whatever because I was still going to the OB and we still delivered in a hospital. We did not have a midwife. We did not do a home birth. And the main reason for that was first time child. We just wanted to have also, you know, the support of a, a medical team and like facility in addition to our doula. Um, and then home birth is not covered by insurance in the state of Georgia. At least it wasn't in 2021 when we gave birth. So we actually came out better financially, especially as newlyweds, just going ahead and going to the hospital and having insurance cover that versus coming out of pocket for um, a midwife. Um, so that was that. Now, that's kind of like the summary of my pregnancy. Let's get into labor. So Blair's due date was November 
17th, 2021. Baby came November 12th, okay? So go find that week in your calendar. On Blair was actually born on a Friday. A couple days before, Tuesday night, around 9, 10 p.m., I was in the shower. I started having contractions. And at first, I wasn't sure. Prior to that, maybe twice, I had like some really bad Braxton Hicks that sent me to my knees. And I was like, okay, if this is what labor is going to be like, I really got to get myself together. And just to pause, going back to the doula thing, um, my preferred birth plan was to have a natural birth. I did have an epidural. But outside of that, I wanted to labor on my own for as long as possible because I knew this was something new for my body. I was giving my body grace. I didn't know what would happen or how things would feel. So I was just like, natural is like my top goal, but my immediate goal is just to labor for as long as I can on my own without medical intervention. If I you know, need the medical intervention, then I'll be more than happy to take it and just um, praise myself for the work that I was able to do on my own. So hearing that preference and with my doula really listening to me um, and honoring my wishes within our birthing prep with our doula and that medical advocacy we did a lot of work on pain management my doula taught me a lot about pain management exercises about um, mental capacity and will um, breathing exercises in different birthing positions just things that i could do to alleviate the pain and to really get my mental right she gave me lots of affirmations um lots of scriptures just to really get in the mental capacity of birthing and so that my body will follow my mind if that makes sense um she also taught Corey a lot of exercises that he could do as my husband as a support partner um to uh alleviate my pain and help with contractions so him supporting my back and and pressing on different uh pressure points of my body to uh, to uh support me while i'm in contractions and things like that so we did a lot of work around pain management i would say that was the theme of my preparation with my doula was pain management even down to things of where i would hold like ice cubes in my hand and time uh, how long I could hold them in my hand. And that would kind of help train my mind to think about contractions and pain and, and pressure in a different way and like the vocabulary that you use around um, birth and all that kind of stuff. Y'all just just get yourself a doula, okay? If you already had your baby without a doula, that's okay. If you have another baby, make sure you have a doula. Um, so anyway, back to the birth. <laughs> um, I, it was like Tuesday, 9, 10 p.m. I started having contractions right when I got out the shower. Lost my mucus plug. Water hadn't broken yet. So I was like, okay, I'm going to tell my husband. We're not going to call the doula yet because, you know, they say the first birth, the first time, you know, is always long. So I was like, and it was already like 9, 10 o'clock. I was already tired. So I told Corey, he took off for like the rest of the week because it could be happening at any point now. And I just went to bed. And my con- at this point, my contractions were maybe hitting like one once every 10 minutes, right? And I was like, okay, I can do this. I can, I can sleep through this. I was already tired. Um, and I could feel and I could like actively feel them like in my sleep. Like they, they were far apart, but they were still like intense. And I just went into all of the birth work that we had been doing surrounding pain management. Um, so by the time I woke up, y'all... They, they woke me up. By the time I woke up Wednesday, they woke me up. And at that point, I feel like they were coming maybe like every every five to, to seven minutes, maybe five to eight minutes. They had picked up just a little bit. So I was like, okay. So I'm at home with my husband. Um, we haven't called the dually yet. You know, we go out on a normal day. I put on something comfortable. I put on like some... Um, like some flare pants and like one of my husband's t-shirts just so I can feel like open and flowy I'm stretching I'm walking around so we get to like midday maybe like noon um and still like nothing nothing is happening like the contractions haven't necessarily gotten quicker but they've gotten more intense like the time frame hasn't decreased between contractions but the contractions are picking up and at this point I'm like okay let's call so we call our doula 
And she's like, okay, how long have they been happening? Give us the whole rundown. And she was like, do you want me to come now? And I was like, yes. And she's like, okay, I'll be there by this evening. This is probably like noon, between noon, two o'clock, I would say. Um, so we call my mom, call the family, let them know, you know, the contractions have started. So my mom comes and, you know, she's helping us get, get ready and packed and everything because this was still 2021. So we still like, you know, post COVID and I could only have two support people in the delivery room with me and we couldn't have any visitors. So we had already decided, obviously, Corey's going to be in the delivery room and my doula because we're paying her. And that was a part of the pa package that we had purchased from her was for her to support us in the hospital as well. Um, so my mother-in-law is arranging her flights to fly down to Atlanta um, from St. Paul. And at this point, we're just waiting. We're just waiting. We're just waiting. And the labor is picking up you guys the contractions and there's not really any way that i can describe it it just feels like someone's squeezing your waist and your abs like your whole body into a ball and they're releasing you and you have a moment to breathe and then you got to get ready for the next one um so yeah so my doula arrives um early evening and we're, we're still walking we're walking around our complex i just i just remember walking i just remember walking and having like both of them on the side of me, my doula and my husband, and I'm holding their hands. And every time a contraction comes, I'm I'm squatting down. I'm squatting down. I'm breathing through and I'm coming back up and we'll walk some more. And then I'm squatting down and I'm breathing through it and I'm rocking and I'm doing all the things. And I'm just trying to like, I'm like in warrior mode. I'm just trying to prepare, right? And so my mom arrives, everyone's there, like my doula, me, Corey, and my mom. Those are like the only four people in the house, right? And then probably around... So, so we're walking and then it just gets to a point where like, okay, I'm done walking. Like I just, I just want to relax and rest because I'm, I'm burning up energy. Right. And I haven't even started pushing yet. My water has still, still has not broken. So we go in the house, we try to relax. I'm trying to get comfortable on the couch. And I thought that I was going to be the type of person in labor to like want the lights and the music and the candles and like the ambiance, but I just wanted solitude like just darkness solitude nobody touch me don't talk to me don't ask me for any updates like ask my husband ask my doula they are my mouthpiece right now and I was starting to transition and I remember laboring over the toilet and then you know just trying to like stay stay open if you will and then I remember trying to get comfortable on the couch and watching tv and like eating grapes and just trying to relax a little bit and I remember I had like one thing that I said I wanted to do before I went to the hospital because I said I wanted to labor at home as long as possible. That was also part of my birth plan. Um, I love watching the Tyler Perry plays, y'all. So I had myself a little Tyler Perry marathon. And I remember watching like just literally every Tyler Perry play ever and eating grapes, just trying to relax, trying to keep my energy up, trying to have enough stamina to push. Because um, at this point, I was getting really tired. It was, um, yeah, it was like Wednesday midday. Um, and I, because these contractions were picking up, I knew I was not finna go to bed Wednesday night. Um, so I remember having, you know, just like that Tyler Perry marathon and I remember eating grapes and I remember watching, um, the big happy family play, which is one of my favorites, me and Corey's favorites. And I love like the music scene at the end when they're just like singing the songs and, and going through the melody or whatever. And I remember having, a, I remember exactly when I started tr to transition because I was like, cut this shit off like I, I can't <laughs> I can't um and I just remember just like trying to get up like reaching for support like reaching for like my two people on my side so I can like bear down during the contraction and just like falling to my knees and just trying just just trying trying to do what I don't know but just trying and I don't know what was going on. I know, well, I know where I was, but I don't know what was going on around me. And when Corey recalls it, he says, I just started boohoo crying, like snot, eyes, like very animalistic, very bear like, just like on all fours. And I remember at some point transitioning and like holding my mom's neck and like leaning over her and squatting and just going from like my mom's neck to the floor. And I don't know what was going on around me or what they were talking about, but I just remember going into like the most internal parts of myself 
And I just remember thinking like, wow, I I don't know. I don't know. I just remember having second thoughts. Second thoughts about what? I don't know because the baby has to come out. But I just remember having second thoughts. And when women say they have like an outer birth experience when they're birthing, this was that portion for me. It didn't happen at the hospital. It happened right before we left. We we're about to leave. But I just remember being on all fours on the carpet of our first apartment where we were living at the time. And I just remember having second thoughts. And I just remember thinking, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And the area around me just like went completely black, whether I literally was like blacking out or whether I closed my eyes, I don't remember. And I promise y'all, I, I promise I went into this place of just like solitude and darkness, but still peaceful having these second thoughts and thinking to myself, I don't know. I don't know whether I verbalized it or not. And I remember God telling me, yes, you do. You just have to do it. You just have to decide. It's just the three of us now. No one can do this but you. And I remember like looking, it's like, I, I remember feeling like I leaned in to like squint, like I'm on the floor, like leaning into the floor. And I just remember seeing like two figures and I I really felt like I saw like God holding Blair and was like, you like, you know, you can do this. You just have to decide. You just have to decide to bring her earth side. I really feel like I saw God and Blair in heaven. And he was just like, you just have to decide to bring her down. Just like bring her earth side. Like you have the support, but no one can decide to do this but you. And when people say that death is the death is birth is the closest thing that women get to death i believe it and when people say they have these outer body experiences where they're having like near death experiences and they hear the voice of god or they see the face of the figure of god or whatever i believe it cuz i think that's what happened to me and after that i just remember like being okay i'm getting hot just whew, just think about it and I remember, and, it, and it, it wasn't long. It was no more than like 10 seconds, but it was so powerful. And I remember just being, I remember just like squinting to see and hearing. And I, I remember being like, I don't know, I don't know. And God being like, yes, you do. You just, just bring her down. Just bring her down earthside. And I remember like coming back to to myself to reality to what was happening around me and I remember my doula saying okay it's time to go to the hospital because I remember telling her I want to go at the last possible minute I remember telling her I want to labor at home for as long as possible please make the call when you think I'm ready and she said it and 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 that just kind of like that that was the push that was the support that was like the affirmation that I needed after coming back from seeing God and my child in the spiritual so y'all I don't know how they got me from the second floor of our apartment complex down the stairs into the car but next thing I know we're in the car um my mom is staying at home waiting for us because she can't come because of the two support people rule so my doula gets in her car and follows us to the hospital and the hospital, the car ride to the hospital in the back seat was the most uncomfortable thing. So uncomfortable. And if I'm sitting in the back seat, if you pretend like this is the back seat, I'm like, I have like a leg. I'm like straddling on like the back seat. I don't got my seatbelt on or nothing. I had my seatbelt on for a little while. I think when we got in there, I think Corey strapped me in, but I think eventually I just took it off. And we're in like evening traffic in Atlanta. It's like, a, um, what it's like Wednesday night now at like between the hours of like six and seven and we're going into the city I delivered Blair at Emory Midtown um this was before that whole trending thing with like the nurses saying their ick or whatever happened I actually had a great experience at Emory Midtown I love the care that we received there and I think it's just so unfortunate that that happened but anyway um yeah, so anyway, so I remember the car ride to the hospital just being so uncomfortable. And I remember just seeing like the back lights of the car. It's just like a red blur because Corey was trying to get us there so fast. And I remember him just telling me like, hold on, babe, we're almost there. We're almost there. You're doing great. I just remember him just being so supportive. 
And I'm pretty sure I was like moaning and growling at this point which, between um, contractions. And then we got to the parking garage. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know why we didn't get get out at emergency. I don't know, but I think that. Oh, I think it was just like COVID regulations or something. So we had to park in the parking garage, and I had to walk from the parking garage um, to um, admission. And um, we weren't able to tour the hospital, but I did have to drop off my um, prenatal workup like beforehand. So luckily, I knew where to go. But it was also hard trying to direct Corey and my doula in between contractions because then now they're probably happening like every three to four minutes and my water still has not broken. Um, so they're like, they're coming. Um, so I'm just walk and I, I remember getting, I, I think I remember, I think I said I know where to go and I, that was enough for them to just like follow me. Um, and so it feels like the wait to get admitted was so long. I had turned in all my paperwork. So at this point they were just checking me in and trying to find like a bed, I guess, or a room. And it probably didn't take that long, but it just felt like it did. Um, and so they took me back first by myself and checked me. I was five centimeters dilated. So they're like, yeah, we're about to, we're going to admit you. We're going to keep you. Um, and I let them know that, you know, I wanted to continue to like labor on my own or whatever. So they got me set up in a room. Then they let Corey and our doula back there. Um, they, they checked me, you know, pinning me up and everything. And I know some women don't like to be hooked up, but I didn't really have a problem with it at this point because I was so far along in my labor. And I was just like, I don't, I don't care. I just want to be comfortable. I just want to be settled. Um, and they let me labor, um, on, on, um, like my stomach and I was able to turn over in my bed and everything. But at this point I was so tired, just no energy because I spent the whole day laboring at home and like walking. Um, and I was just really burnt out. So I was like, I don't want anything for my contractions, but is there anything that you can give me just to sleep, just to like sleep through them? So they gave me Nubane. And at the end of it all, I think I ended up getting like three doses of Nubane. Um, so I slept, uh, Wednesday night. Okay. And then Thursday, wake up in the hospital. Corey and Dula are there. Um, water still hasn't broken. So... Now I'm trying to walk around the room. I'm uh, laboring in the shower. Family's calling, asking if there's a baby there yet. So at this point, I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little tired. I'm like, why haven't I progressed? I've also gotten checked still. I'm at 60 meters at this point. Um, but y'all, the way the contractions are hitting, it's not making sense. It's not mathing. I'm having contractions like every two minutes. And Blair is just not wanting to come out. Um, so this is, yeah, so we're, we're like Thursday now, um, Thursday all day in the hospital. It goes like this. Um, they give me like more doses of Nubane to help me sleep and everything. Um, so, so go through the day Thursday, Thursday night gets here still, you know, nothing. I've walked around, I've labored in the shower. I've done all of the things. They've given me more Nubane. I'm laboring all the ways that I want to. They give me more Nubane and I think fentanyl or something. Something else that they gave me to sleep Thursday night. Um, in the middle of the night, either like super late Thursday, early Friday morning. It was probably like, honestly, it was probably like five in the morning Friday um my water breaks and I feel it <laughs> and I'm so tired that I just roll over I don't think I even tell anybody um and so early Thursday morning well not early probably like mid-morning uh Friday the nurse comes in I'm still six centimeters they check me and all the things and they're like hey you still haven't progressed um, you've been here since Wednesday night. We want to give you a few options. We think that you should get the epidural. Um, and if you don't, con and if you know you don't want to take, if you want to labor a little bit longer, then we may have to start monitoring the baby and like look into a C-section. So they give us that information. They were really gracious and kind with like letting us have a moment as a family to discuss it. Um, 
And I was like, okay, can you give us like, you know, like an hour or two? Just like, let me just kind of like work through this. And they're like, fine, that's great. Super cool. So that was maybe like 11 noonish. So they come back at, so we talk it out. They come back at two. I decide to get the epidural. Um, and, you know, we're updating family and everything. Because now family's concerned as well. Like, why isn't the baby here yet? Is there stress? Whatever, whatever. So um, it takes about an hour for the doctor to come in and give me my epidural. Um, and he was very nice. Very, like, kind. Like, little, like, tiny white man. Um, very kind. And my nurses were great. One of my nurses, I remember her name. It was. It was either Brittany or Brianna, and she was so sweet. And y'all, at this point, the nurses are like coming in and checking on me often, and they're just asking how I'm doing because I'm, I've been having contractions two minutes or less apart for like two to three days now without an epidural, without Pitocin at this point, just getting Nubane to help me sleep. So they're like, they're they're supporting me they're congratulating me they're like you're a trooper i'm i'm not i'm not screaming or anything in pain i'm just you know i'm just i'm just in myself so they're being really sweet and congratulating me and this 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 that and the third which was very nice no, no one's trying to pressure me they understand me everything is great so doc comes in and gives me my epidural and i'm leaning over um my nurse and they have me hooked up so they can see my contractions um, and she's like, are you sure you're okay? Like your contractions are off the wall. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm in, I'm in my head. And at this point, everyone thinks that I have a high pain tolerance, which I kind of think that I do. And just, again, the mental work that I was doing around birthing and pain management really, 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 really helped me. Um, so y'all, as soon as they gave me that epidural, my energy just like skyrocketed and I felt so much relief. I could still feel my contractions. I don't know if they didn't give me a, I don't know if they like didn't give me a full dose or if it was because I was so small or if it was because, or if they like adjusted my dosage because my, my contractions were already so off the wall, but what bit they did give me helped. And I was able to like talk to my mom and talk to family members a little bit because at first I was just so focused. I didn't want to speak to anybody. But it gave me the relief that I needed. And now looking back on it, I think that I was just so hyper-focused and so in warrior mode about birthing that it made me tense up and it made Blair tense up and she was just not ready to come out. Um, so they gave me that. And I remember like like having like a small conversation with something or something with Corey. Like Corey's on this side of the bed on like the sleeper sofa and my doula is over here. And I have like, after they gave me that Bredouille, I had like a peanut and I was like rolled over and I was talking to Corey and I was like, oh, I feel better i can like relax a little bit i'm thinking that i'm gonna be able to like get like a little cat nap in before i have to start pushing before it kicks in and they hooked me up to pitocin too gave me a catheter all of that um and so i remember saying something to Corey, and then rolling over to my doula to adjust my peanut and just feeling like the strongest sensation to push and i was like and y'all this is probably within like 30 minutes of me having my epidural and I told her I grabbed her hand and I said Jatim it's time to push <laughs> and she was like are you sure you just got it? I was like it is time go get somebody and I'm trying to like because I'm laying down and I'm trying to lift up so that I can like work with the gravity and like be at an angle and so maybe within like 30 minutes from that, the midwife comes in, the midwife at the hospital, and she starts saying stuff about, like, and I'm just like, like, I'm like, I'm I'm already pushing, like, I can't help it at this point, um, and so she's like, hey, how did y'all get here, did you drive, did you come down the hallway, and I'm like, what are you talking about driving, I have to push a baby out, and she was like, you know, did you come down 85, and like, you know, to Atlanta, and my husband, and I'm like, talk to my husband, like, ask him, like, I literally say that, I'm like, ask him, because I'm so focused, and he was like, yeah, and so she was like, okay, look at me, and I love this analogy, she was like, okay, look at me, you're coming down the highway, and you're going 45, but I need you to get to a good 75, and I need you to push, I need you to punch it, and that is how she worked that's how she helped me work through when to push, when to slow down so I wouldn't tear, when to push according to when my contractions were happening on like the monitor or whatever. And I could also feel them. So I could still feel them. So I knew when to push. Um, And y'all, I pushed for like 
30 minutes, maybe like three times, like one push every 10 minutes. And my baby girl was here and she was so fat and swollen and pink and beautiful and crying. And as soon as Blair came out, looking for the milk i was i was breastfeeding her within after they cleaned her up and everything uh probably breastfeeding her within 10 minutes of her coming out and it was just a beautiful moment and of course all of my birth and everything came out which was like mind-blowing for me i was like oh 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 like i remember that's all i could say was oh oh um and i got to see my placenta we didn't encapsulate it but i probably would consider that the next go round. And it was just so beautiful and full of life and still pulsing. And we did delayed cord clamping. Um, and I remember when when the midwife came in, she's asking me like all the stuff about how we're driving here. They bring in the mirror. They 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 want to review my birth plan with me, which I appreciate. But in that moment, I was not trying to have that, which is also another reason why you need to have your spouse or your partner and your doula to advocate with you to be your mouthpiece. Because when you're pushing when you're in labor you're really not trying to communicate with nobody outside of the lord and your baby that's how i feel um so i did not put my phone on do not stop before i started filming so that's how i feel so they came in and she's asking you know about our driving and trying to get me in the mindset and give me this analogy to pushing and then she pulls out my birth plan and is going down the list one by one while i'm trying to push so i literally tell her ask one of them i'm focusing so she she goes over it real quick with Corey and my husband they bring the mirror in front of me because i said in my birth plan that i wanted to catch my baby so i can see everything that's happening and i see blair's dark brown hair coming out and i'm like oh my goodness i can't do i remember being like oh my goodness oh my goodness i can't catch her i can't catch her but it was like just it was it was happy like i remember like smiling when i was saying it just like just like bubbly like i was on laughing gas or something and I remember saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, I just, like, did not have the capacity to, like, multitask. And, like, my whole birth plan went out the window. And the midwife and the nurse were so encouraging. They're like, yes, you can. You wanted to do this. Her head is right there. You just have to catch her. So, Corey kind of caught her first. And he, like, he, like, got her shoulders. He, like, got her head. And then I was able to scoop her up, like, under her shoulders and put her on me for a little bit. And then they cleaned her up and it was just so surreal y'all just so beautiful i know everyone doesn't want to become a mom everyone has that right but it was for me it was just such a beautiful experience and if we have another child i cannot wait to experience that again with like all the love and intention in my heart it was just so beautiful and she came out hungry um they also they were also trying to hurry up and get her out and like encourage me for that Purdue because Blair pooed and me we had meconium in the water so they were trying to like get that squared away too. Okay, on my phone that I have to hurry up and then it's almost time for me to get Blair. Um, but yeah, so there was meconium in the water so they were trying to get her out because of that. Um, but yeah, she was born at like four thirty eight p.m. on on that Friday and. Within an hour of me getting the epidural, it was time to push, and I probably pushed three times, and she was out, and it was, it was beautiful. It was great. We stayed in the delivery room um, for maybe like three hours while we were waiting to get our postpartum room ready, um, and at that point, my doula left, and we would have a follow-up postpartum appointment with her within the coming weeks, and um, we stayed overnight in the postpartum room and probably within an hour of us getting to our postpartum room, maybe like four hours, um, four or five hours within me delivering, um, I was ready to take a shower. I was able to have my first postpartum poo and I felt really good. I was able to walk and everything. And then we were discharged um, Saturday morning, probably late morning, like around like 11 noon, one o'clock. And my mom was waiting for us at home. Um, and uh, my mother-in-law got there later that day. Her flight got in um, and it was just, you know, family around and it was beautiful. And my healing experience was really great too. Um, I bled maybe for about two weeks. Um, my, in, my catheter and the injection side of my epidural were like pretty sore, probably like up until a month postpartum. Um, and then once I was cleared at six weeks, actually my OB, I really appreciate this for her. She didn't, she cleared me at six weeks, but she encouraged me to go back to activity eight weeks. 
um, and activity, meaning physical activity and sexual activity. And I really, really appreciate that uh, from her because I think it really gave my body the extra healing that it needed. And then after I was clear for that, um, at eight weeks, I started stretching a little bit more, walking a little bit more. And I just want to encourage moms, like, don't focus on snapping back, focus on healing. And when you focus on healing and giving your body the grace that it needs, then the snap back will follow. But take that, take that time. Like your body just did a whole bunch of stuff and birthing a child causes trauma to your body and to your baby. Like you have to push them out and they have to come through like this, like opening, so give yourself grace and give yourself time to heal. And, you know, they clear us at six weeks, but take an additional two weeks, take an additional three weeks, honey, do what you have to do. Anyway, y'all, yeah, just make sure that you're taking that time because it's serious work, uh, growing and birthing babies. And for me, my focus on birth was pain management and my focus on postpartum was healing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Also wanted to let y'all um, know of a little announcement. So this video will be going live at the end of May, and I won't be uploading any new videos for a while. I will continue to share um, current and older content, but I won't be uploading any new videos for a while, probably throughout the summer and early fall, because as some of y'all know, I launched my blog, queentaylorlauren.com, at the end of April, where graciousness lives in every season of life for women um, through the single season, through wifehood, and through motherhood. So all of my YouTube videos, I am repurposing them into blog posts for the blog. So I'm playing catch up. And it kind of doesn't make sense for me to continue to make um, new videos here on YouTube that I will then again later have to go back and repurpose into blog posts. So I'm taking time out of YouTube to focus on my blog and get caught up with repurposing content. And then when I come back, um, the YouTube videos that I make will also have corresponding um, blog posts from that point on. Every Monday, you'll get a YouTube video with the corresponding blog post. Um, so that's what I'll be working on. So this will be the last video for a while, but continue to like, comment, subscribe, and engage with me um, here on IG and on my blog. And I'll see y'all in a couple months.